In sharp contrast to mainland China, 120,000 prayed at Taiwan Pride. Some 120,000 people paraded in the streets of Taipei as the city's 20th annual Pride event celebrated the LGBTQ community Saturday, despite the rainy weather. The Taiwan Pride Parade began in 2003 with just 700 participants gathering in a park in central Taipei, most of them wearing face masks to avoid stigmatization. Taiwan has since become the first place in Asia to recognize same-sex marriage in 2019. It's seen one as one of the most LGBTQ friendly places in Asia. People in raincoats carried large pride flag down the street as revelers in rainbow capes and elaborate makeup followed. Some waved smaller flags while others held signs or umbrellas. A group in white blew thousands of bubbles into the gray sky. One university student described an LGBTQ friendly environment in their senior high school. Eight-year-old Chen said, quote, we are not discriminated, everyone knew, end quote. But others still face challenges. Tommy Huang said he feels distant from his partner's family, saying, quote, his parents haven't fully accepted me yet. One day, I really hope I could visit his parents during Lunar New Year and get to know them, and that they could accept us the way we are, end quote. Although Taiwan recognizes same-sex marriage for its nationals, it does not allow foreigners to have same-sex marriages legalized. You know, Taiwan um, is in a really precarious spot with China. Um, it, it seems like they're fighting and fighting to to be their own sovereign nation, and this is just another thumb to the you know face of China. And I'm here for it. I love it. I love that they are working. They still have a lot of traditional families there. There's still some roads to travel, but mm -hmm. they're so progressive compared to most of Southeast Asia. It's going to be interesting to see in <clears throat> when we do this story in 10 years or in 15 years, um, when I think it's pretty safe to assume that they will have been absorbed back in to the People's Republic. And there'll be sort of a status of Hong Kong, which we've seen not not fall off a cliff, but the rights have certainly been trending in the wrong direction mm. for a long time. So I, I think, hope, I mean, they didn't they already give up the world, Gay World Olympics or the yes. Gay Games? Yes. Uh, so that it's only going to be in Central America now. Yeah. So Quite they're already while. starting to, to bow to um, pressure from Beijing. So I just hope that they're able to maintain their spirit and their pride and their rights. You know what's really interesting? about Taipei Pride is, and of course, uh, David, your story does the compare and contrast to mainland China. Mm -hmm. um, these are Chinese, Taipei mm -hmm. is Chinese. Mm -hmm. They're just not on the mainland. Uh, it's like what Hong Kong used to be. Uh, Hong Kong was, um, um, you know, the gay game site, uh, et cetera. Uh, that has changed since mainland's uh, political domination. But it's interesting in the compare and contrast of what's going on in Taipei and in Taiwan versus mainland. Homophobia is taught. It's just taught. And in mainland China, they have a very significant, there are estimates that there is something in the neighborhood of 70 to 90 million LGBT people in mainland China. Oh. Think of that. Mm -hmm. 70 to 90 million LGBT. Um, Shanghai Pride um, attracts 10,000 people. Uh, there is no Beijing Pride and none of the other major cities. They've got 50 mega cities in China have any Pride events. That is a taught experience of homophobia. Diversity is educated. Mm -hmm. And what Taiwan is doing and what Taipei is doing in allowing this event and the LGBTQ community literally stepping off for the parade is educating community. And while there is still issues in Taiwan, in compare and contrast to mainland China, it is completely different. And it is the representation of the two Chinas, the education of what's going on in Taiwan versus the oppression that is going on in mainland. And, and it's just a question of, are you willing to be bought off your economy to an authoritarian political system? And um, the one thing I hadn't really thought about, your observation 10 years from now, um, if Taipei is absorbed into the giant monolith, I hope it is an infection that comes to the mainland and helps to infect the entire population of mainland China because Taiwan is doing it way better than mainland Chinese. Mm -hmm. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. 
like this broadcast, and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.